What's going on guys? Zuko back with another Dragonflight video. Hope you're all doing very well. I wanted to bring to you a plus 26 black rook hold that I did. It's the first plus 26 that I have done so far. Been on a mission to try and get all the 25s done across the board. Um, I was working on some of these keys last night and wasn't able to get them done unfortunately. But we're working there. We're getting towards it. Um, I'm mostly just pugging them at this point which is fine. Um, but we did do a 26 black rook hold and I want to show it to you because it was it was awesome I just want to show you kind of that that first 26 that I have completed and um, Give you a glimpse of what it's like to Heal one of these with the shaman build that I'm running I'll just pause really really quickly and show you the build so that we can um, Give you guys an understanding of what I'm running with here I ran with uh, Creation Core as my secondary effect on Totemic Recall. You do not have to do this, but you can go call the elements if you want. Creation Core lets you put down two healing stream totems and then call back both of them. And then you could potentially do four healing stream totems. They're all on top of each other. But um, you can have four healing stream totems. You can see them right here. If you want to do it that way, um, Call of the Elements only lets you get one healing stream totem back, but... It lets you do it more frequently. So it's, it's about what you kind of want to do. It's up to you. I ran uh, Healing Tide Totem on this build. You do not have to run this <clears throat> if you don't want to. You could run Mana Tide. You could run Earth and Wall. You could get extra length on your Riptides. That's a very good one there. You could just run with Ancestral Vigor. One point in that is fine. I just took it because I wanted an extra cooldown. I was just messing around with stuff. But uh, this is the build that I was running in the key. And you can see the healing overall. The actual healing... From Healing Tide Totem was okay, but again, not mandatory. I don't know if I prioritized pressing it enough. The point is, you can pick something else if you want to, okay? The rest of the build is what I normally run. I've got Living Stream, I have Earth Living Weapon, down to a sentence, and then the big change that I've made from like my very first passive um, healing video is that I don't take Ancestral Awakening anymore, and I don't take Primal Tidal Core. So I have... Tidebringer and High Tide. And Tidebringer is really the big one. Like, it's just super essential to have the ability to have your chain heals cast super fast and bounce further, right? They bounce really far now if you've got the Tidebringer thing as well. It's like every eight seconds, you're going to get this really good um, chain heal that allows you to respond to damage that's coming in very, very quickly. So. That's the biggest reason for it. It gives you that ability to react to damage. And um, that's just super important in this uh, in this current Mythic Plus. If you're pushing bigger, bigger keys, people just take crazy amounts of damage. So, But I still love all the passive components of this with our big healing stream totems going off all the time. The Earth Living Weapon stuff going off all the time. And we have two points in Torrent to make our Riptides really, really strong as well. So lots of other components to the build are still the same. I've just kind of flexed those points right there. I'm 486 with this build. I don't know why I'm not 487. There's something that I'm missing there. But the point is I'm 486. We've got 28% haste, 36 crit. I think I'm running crit flasks now, files, sorry, just to get me up there. And then um, 53 mastery. So that's where we're at. Let me dive right in here. And um, we always go to the right. I think the right is the easier choice because it has less uh, one less protector. The protectors are the real problem here. See this ghostly protector here? That's He's the big problem. So uh, he's going to buff everybody else. And you have to make sure you try and kill him as quickly as possible. But we'll see what happens here. I'm healing, of course. We're uh, trying to do as much damage as we can at the very beginning of the pull when there's no damage coming out. So I'm up to 80, 90k here just with healing rain and uh, with a couple of chain landings. I am not running Stormkeeper. I think Stormkeeper, you can drop it in higher keys. You just don't need the extra damage. You really just need other things like the knockup that you just saw from Thunder uh, Storm. Um, your cap totem is really important. You need uh, healing. You can see we just died. And we're just getting one shot from these soul blasts, right? So you need CC to stop soul blasts from going off. You need um, extra healing to keep people alive so that they don't die to these uh, really insane attacks. You want to be able to respond really quickly to the damage that's coming out. We did about uh, 120k HPS there, 50 some k DPS. The damage is really easy to put down, honestly. It's healing rain and a, and a couple of flame shocks, honestly. Just get your flame shocks out. They buffed flame shock and lava burst and lightning bolt in the recent uh, patch that just happened last week. So 
your um your single target damage is is really good now actually it's really strong and just putting a healing rain down and sending out some lava bursts is going to be lots of damage okay you don't really have to prioritize chain lightning too much um it is good to cast it for sure but realistically speaking your lava burst is probably going to do more damage if you're casting it now this first section of the dungeon is like one of the hardest sections of the whole dungeon um i'd say it's the second hardest probably because these mobs just hit really really hard and it's fortified week once again right fortified um volcanic and spiteful so particularly difficult for melee comps once the spiteful start coming out but these packs are pretty tough we do end up getting through them it takes a little bit longer than we might have wanted this boss fight is pretty easy um on fortify week this tank puts him in the corner here this is a pretty typical strat you want the frontal from the boss to just go into the into the side another tip for you guys when you get this swirl on you here uh, i've got the echoes thing you want to just chill it doesn't detonate right away you don't have to freak out and like run to the back of the arena just calm down it doesn't detonate right away i'm just kind of going in a small little square here one two three four going in a square or a circle whatever you want to say and i'm just keeping my body outside where the detonation is happening that's all you got to do just go in a tight little circle tight little square and you'll be fine and it doesn't detonate right away so just don't we don't have to freak out about it so um here comes another one i got another one here i'm doing another little little square here we're going in this i'm just doing little stutter steps trying to get some casts up you have time to get some casts off if you walk a little bit ahead of where you're supposed to be i promise you you've got time to keep doing damage to keep doing healing so it's very important that you try and do that when you get that mechanic now he goes into the middle we get all the ads spawning we have some really good cc here including a slow totem right you have earth bind totem you can see i've used it right here already that's going to slow down some of the mobs and then i have cap totem which is going to stun the mobs, and then I've got my knockup, which I can use as well, and that slows them. Thunderstorm slows them. So this is a really, really important thing to use as a Resto Shaman here. Use your CC as best you can to um, slow them down. You're going to have those three big tools that you can use. Make sure that you're using them. It's going to help people out a lot. Soul Burst does end up one-shotting someone. I think my Spirit Link was like a second too late. But I also think that the guy was outside of my Spirit Link. I should have dropped Spirit Link earlier so that all the players who were outside of it walked in so that they know, oh, yeah, he's dropping his Spirit Link. I should get in that. So that's actually my fault. I dropped it a little bit late. I don't know what I was doing. But just drop your Spirit Link earlier so that people know we're Spirit Linking. Now get your butt in here, right? Just make sure that you do that. It's uh, pretty important. That's the boss fight. No big deal. Let's move on to this trash pack. This is the spider section. The um, I think the paladin here like pre bubbles when he's walking up the stairs. Yeah, he bubbled right there. He's already bubbled, so he's bubble taunting, which is good because he doesn't want to take any stacks of the debuff. Here you can have your cap totem. I do have double cap totem, so there's some dungeons where you do want to take double cap totem and have it go off twice. You can see it's going to go off once right there, and then I think it'll go off again. There we go. That's really good for the this spider section. It's good for this dungeon in general, where there's a lot of important abilities you want to interrupt, like the archers coming up or the knife dance that's coming up soon. There are some compositions where running double cap totem is actually very bad. If you have like a demon hunter who also has a stun or um, even a rep paladin. So in this comp, it actually might have been a bit of a liability, but a rep paladin will stun everybody with wake of ashes. I'm stunning them with double cap totem. Then, if they get stunned three times in a row like that, they're basically, you can't stun them anymore. It's called a DR, right? Diminishing returns. It's basically, you, you just can't stun them anymore. So, sometimes taking static charge, which is the other talent, besides the, uh, uh, on the choice node for the double stun versus static charge, sometimes it's better to just take that one because um, you're going to not have that DR happen as much. Especially if you're running with a DH, a Demon Hunter, and a Pally. Like, you're just going to have way too many stuns so uh just be aware of that this pack is pretty dangerous arcane blitz is going off and knife dance is about to go off it got interrupted arcane blitz was not getting interrupted people were just literally dying to it um i think i kicked it once uh, but um you just have to cc this stuff it's fort week these guys are doing crazy amounts of damage you must interrupt the cast there goes an arcane blitz once again and i'm almost dead if i didn't heal myself there i would have died to the shoot knife dance is going off so I was getting a little frustrated there because you just have to CC this stuff. That is how you get through this section of the dungeon. This is the hardest section of the dungeon, in my opinion, on Fort Week, is 
all of these mobs here. It's like the hardest and potentially the easiest section in the dungeon because if you CC the mobs correctly, it's literally not an issue at all. There's no problem whatsoever. So this pack coming up with the dog that jumps, very, very dangerous. This is super dangerous. There's a frontal here. There's archers that jump away and shoot at you. There's the dog jumping on people, and there's knife dance going off. So these all have to be CC. This is where the double cap totem is actually pretty good because it's going gonna, it's gonna to get knife dance right here going off its second time. Wait, oh, that was the second time already. Never mind, nobody got... There, I, I got knife dance with my knockup. So, again, we have multiple tools to help here. But, I mean, other people in your team need to help you. This is just an incredibly difficult pull if you do not have crowd control ready to deal with it. Like, it's just... It just is. So, there's knife dance going off again. There's another knife dance being cast. I'm just pressing ascendance. We're just kind of healing through it. This is not what you should do. I'm doing 300k HPS right now. Like, this is not... This is not how you're supposed to deal with this. You're supposed to have a CC lined up for every one of those knife dances, and unfortunately we didn't, so I just kind of tried to plow through it. You can now, that's what you can do with this build as a Resto Shaman. You know, this is uh, all the passive ticks going off in the background, my big chain heals coming through with Tidebringer. I mean, that's what helped to sort of save this pull. Um, and uh, obviously a couple people did end up dying, but the pull was saved in the sense that we did complete it, which is really important. So <clears throat> this next pull coming up, Sorry, something wrong with my cheek there. This next pull coming up is also very difficult. This is part of the most difficult um, pulls in the dungeon. This this whole section is the most difficult uh, section here. There's Arcane Blast Guy that needs to die. I get an Ascendance proc there. Pretty good. I knock everybody up when the archers are trying to do their dash thing. There's the second Arrow Barrage. She's dashing. I'm going to Cap Totem. It's a little bit late. And you can see how quickly the Cap Totem goes around. Look at how quickly the little... Little thing switch, switches around. That means that we have diminishing returns now. So we've stunned too many times. And uh, this is what I'm talking about when it when I'm talking about the double Captain being a bit of a liability. There's knife dance going off. Somebody did get it. Thank God. Very, very good. Arrow barrage. Another arrow barrage going off. I just have to walk out of it. Arrow barrage is probably the least dangerous mechanic in here because you can avoid the damage from it. Knife dance, you can't avoid the damage, right? Um, the Arcane Blitz guy casting, you can't avoid that damage. The archers are still super dangerous, don't get me wrong. They need to be CC'd, but like if you were out of CC's, then um, that's okay potentially for the archers. Here's the second pack that spawns once you um, uh, once you hide behind the pillar there. And the first knife dance was taken care of, which is very good. Second knife dance is coming right here. I got my knock up, so I got it right there. That's one big way you can do it. And then I still have Cap Totem which I'm going to use, I think, in a second here just to stop the archers from shooting people. The shoot from the archers actually ends up just doing a crazy amount of damage. I also got Knife Dance with my Cap Totem, so that's very good. Um, but the shoot is honestly like one of the most dangerous things in here. They just keep shooting people. If they both choose to shoot one target, it does crazy amounts of damage. So I just Spirit Link to save everybody here just to help us stay alive here. This is, it, this is where you want to blow your cooldowns. On Fortify Week, this is where you want to blow them. It's perfectly acceptable to blow big cooldowns here. You're going to want to use them all. I'm telling you. The amount of healing required in this section of the dungeon is pretty stupid. Okay. So then we get uh, past these archers and the boss fight. Not too much to say here. You're really hoping to get the green laser beam on you if you're the shaman here. Because you can just jump in place. If you guys don't know that secret, I'll show you in a second. Um, she does that first mechanic. And then she's going to jump up. Look, I'm getting it right now. So... She's going to jump up and spawn the adds, and then she's going to start channeling like a laser beam on people. And if you get the laser beam, you can just jump up and down, okay? So that's what I'm doing right now, and it will make sure that the laser puddle, the green puddle, doesn't go anywhere. It's just staying right in one place. So if you're a Resto Shaman, just stand here, cast Flame Shock to get your instant lava bursts, and then cast Riptide, put your healing stream totems down, do all that good stuff. Put Healing Tide Totem down if you want to. You have a lot of instant cast buttons that you can press. If people are really dying, you could Nature Swiftness a Chain Heal. But that's what you can do on this fight. You can stand in that puddle and keep jumping up and down and avoid the damage that's coming through. And it's, uh, it's a really good strategy, especially if you get it as the healer. It's like perfect. So that is that fight right there. <clears throat> Ravencrest isn't too difficult. We get past the boulders, and now we're into 
probably the third most difficult section of the dungeon, I would say. The last section that we did was definitely the most difficult. The section at the beginning of the dungeon is like the second most difficult. I think this is the third most difficult one. These guys just need to be interrupted. They try to drink a potion, which makes them like do the um, inflammation, the, the, the flamethrower thing everywhere. So they need to be stopped from casting that potion. It's a channel that they do. And if you stop them from doing the channel, then it ends up um, basically just stopping them from being able to do the indigestion. So it is drink ancient potion. That's it right there. So I'm going to knock them up here. I think we've already used a bunch of CC. So I was holding my CC. I did end up using my cap totem there. Then I knock them up right there. Now, one of them did get the potion cast off. So he's channeling indigestion and you can see the indigestion immediately killed somebody. So this is a very dangerous mechanic. If you don't deal with them channeling that potion, once they get the channel through, you can't stop indigestion from going off with like a knockup. Like my knockups don't do anything. I think the stun would do something, but they were completely DR'd on stuns at this point. So that was kind of useless. Um, but yeah, you can see this is a, this is a sort of a tough corridor to handle if you don't do the CC right. These guys are drinking potions once again. The their priest just feared it. That was really, really good. I have my knockup. I'm going to knock them up right there to stop them from channeling. This guy's drinking another one. I'm going to do cap totem this time. The warrior did a shockwave, so that's another stun. The warrior had shockwave, so we have way too many stuns in here. I definitely should not have had my double cap totem going off, but this was just a pug, so I didn't even know who was here. Anyway, that's how you handle this, this uh, hallway. Very, very slow, methodical. Make sure you're stopping them from doing that lat channel. It's very important. Once again, as a Resto Shaman, you basically want to play in melee at all times because you need to be knocking enemies up. Really important to have that knock-up. Knock-up is like different than stunning, right? It's a different form of CC, so it doesn't have a diminishing return unless you've... I mean, knock-up doesn't have a diminishing return like at all because they're always going to get knocked up. If you knock them up, you knock them up, period. So knock-up is like one of the best CCs in the entire game, actually, um, for that. So we get through that. We get to the boulders here. Now we have um, the Dominators. You want to do two Dominators at a time. In higher level keys, they're actually skipping these Dominators, I've seen, um, which is really good. If you get the sick bats on you, there's a little symbol on your character that'll say, that'll show that you're being pursued by the bats. You can stun the bats, so Cap Totem is really good here. There, it's happening to the uh, priest right now, and I drop a Cap Totem. It stuns all the bats. So now the, shot, now the priest can just stay there and keep doing damage and not be too worried about dying. So... That's a really important thing you want to do for your for your team. You also want to kick Fell Frenzy. If you're in a more organized group, you want to have a kick order for Fell Frenzy to make sure that it actually gets kicked. Otherwise, you are um, you're in big trouble for sure. If the if enough Fell Frenzies get off, the tank will just start dying because those um, the Fell Frenzy gives everybody like 50% more damage and more attack speed. It's a nightmare. You do not want Fell Frenzy to go off. Okay. <clears throat> so you work your way to the top, you kill them all, and then we've got um, this boss fight, uh, Smash Spike the Hateful. Not much going on here. I would just say, as a Resto Shaman, when you he does the Hateful Gaze, make sure you pop your defensive. I just hit um, Astral Guidance there, or Astral... Uh, I forget what it's called right now. The point is, I have my defensive on, my wall on. He's going to hit Earth Shaking Roar right now. Try and have two totems down for this. Have your Healing Stream totems down, and then you're just going to do a Chain Heal. Because the Chain Heal will bounce really far, and it will do big, big healing. This is why you have Tidebringer. This is why you have High Tide. These are really, really good talents to have for this burst uh, potential going on. Now, you don't actually have to. On this fight, your the damage that comes out, it's all inside of that big one shot you know chunk that he does right here this earth shaking stomp that's all the damage in the entire fight basically so you don't actually have to recover that quickly if you don't want to you could just put some healing stream totems down put some riptides down and just slowly work ever work everybody back up to full health because there's no other damage coming out as you can see so just rinse and repeat try to take the um, beams to the edges if you can you can always put a beam right on top of another beam so this warrior, I think he ends up putting the beam in a bad place there. But, oh no, he ended up landing it perfectly. He, the warrior landed this beam on top of a previous beam. That's perfect. That's what you kind of want to do. I'm going to do the same thing here. Actually, no, I'm just going to go to an empty spot over here. Try and keep it on the edges of the walls like this so that you're creating like a, a zone in the middle that is safe. Whoever put this one, this green one in the middle, that's not a good place to put it. You don't want to do that. I have another one. I'm going to go over to this corner here. Try and drop this line right on top of the other lines. 
Again, this is what you want to do with the green lines as much as you can. Just put them on top of each other. On tyrannical weeks, the room will, will fill up very quickly. So you have to be very, very careful about what you do because the fight lasts for so long. Here's the final trash packs. These guys are really annoying. The Lancers and the Swordsmen, they will, of course, do Raven Dive, where they will dive on top of you, and it does, like, 80% of your health, and it stuns you. So if you get hit twice, there's the Raven Dive happening right there. If you get hit a couple of times, you will just die. So there's a trick for this at the top. I'll talk about Other people have spoken about it recently in YouTube videos, but I will show you a trick for this in a second. See, seeing these guys is really, really good. Having a knockup, of course, is very good. Or cap totem, either one of them is good. Watch your positioning here. Watch your feet. It's very dangerous. Okay. There's when I knock them up. I stop them from doing one right there. And then we move on to the pack up above. Once you get up to the upper chamber here, you can get into a cubby. So I'm getting into a cubby with the Shadow Priest. All range people can do this. It's cubby time. You get in here or you get in here or here. And once you get in there, you um, even if you get targeted by the Raven Dive, watch, we're getting targeted right now, they will not complete their jump. So you can see the channel goes off, and then we do not get jumped on. So it's a bit of a cheese here to stop them from jumping on you, but it's something that you can do. And you just kind of turn your camera around, and I fall out of the cubby, and then I get back in the cubby. One problem is Spiteful. The Spitefuls will come over and start whacking you, so that's a bit of a problem this week. But generally speaking... This is a very good strat to stop your range from getting killed, and it lets your ranged just cast freely without having to stop uh, their damage. So, <clears throat> very good tip for you guys there. Here's the last boss fight. This is not tyrannical, so this boss fight is not too, too difficult. <clears throat> In the opening section here, I just want to highlight that Whirling Blade will target a player, and you can bait where you want the Whirling Blade to go. He will not throw the blade until the very end of the cast so wherever you are standing at the very end of the cast that's where the whirling blade is going to go so you can see he's casting it right now it ends up going on somebody and it goes up against the wall that's what you want you want it to go up against the wall so that it takes up very little room and then generally speaking what i've done on most fights is that we go to a completely different section of the encounter so if we start on the right hand side you see the whirling blade going back and forth we just go to the left hand side of the encounter because we don't want to be anywhere near that whirling blade they do so much damage they'll literally one shot you on, on tyrannical here comes the second whirling blade he basically puts it right with the other whirling blade so that's a good strategy as well this is working out just fine and we're kind of just moving slowly across the room we're in a dangerous spot right now because we're in the middle of the room and we're going to get a big shadow beam on us so you don't really want to be in the middle of the room there it is right there but um, generally speaking, the strategy that this prop pally is doing right now is perfectly fine. Here comes the main boss fight. You're going to want to drop Spirit Link here. You want to pop your Astral Wall, right? Um, and you want to have your Healing Stream totems down. Here comes Spirit Link. Here comes my wall. And then I'm going to get ready to heal people with Chain Heal. You have to get people topped up right away because this does so much damage. So the Spirit Link will do most of the work for you. And then you can get your Riptides out and then do a bunch of Chain Heals to keep people alive. So that's what you want to do. And then when the um, whenever the bug lands on somebody, the Swarm, you have to basically single target triage that person. You can do Chain Heals on them. But realistically, you're going to want to be doing Healing Surges on them. Use a Nature Swiftness into an Instant Healing Surge to make sure that they stay alive. In the intermission phase here, you can drop your Windrush Totem to make sure that people have a good burst of movement speed at the beginning to get them going. And then hold Bloodlust until right now. Do not Bloodlust on this fight until after the first Ring Around the Rosy event. You do it right now. This is when you do it, okay? People do this all the time. They make this huge mistake where they Bloodlust um, like early in the fight when he's about to, to go invisible and do the Ring Around the Rosy thing. It's really, really bad. Don't do that. You want a Bloodlust right now in the final section of the fight so that you can just plow through this guy. Bop's really, really good on this fight, of course. From Pally's, it stops the bug from doing any damage to you. But realistically, it's all on you as the healer to stop the person from dying from Swarm. The Swarm is super dangerous. Here comes the next Swarm. It's on uh, Sneaky, which is the warrior. So I need to triage him again. Do some healing surges. There we go. We get him topped up. And again, I just start putting my totems down as well. Get a healing rain down. Healing rain is really good for the deluge buff. 
Um, if any, if everybody's standing in your healing rain, they take 20% more healing from you. So that's a really big deal. I pop ascendance here near the end with double healing stream totem. So the healing stream totems are each ticking on one person. And then the ascendance is duplicating that healing. It's very, very good. We're pumping a lot of healing for this last swarm. And you can see we've got plenty of time left. Two minutes left basically on this boss. Um, obviously if we wiped, then that would be a complete dungeon wipe. So we don't really have enough time to, to do that, but you know, we weren't sweating too hard in this key. We kind of just did it at a normal pace and things were fine. And that is a plus 26 dark heart, not dark heart, uh, black work hole. And I'm at 3241 now. I think I'm a little bit higher now. Let's just check the overall numbers really quick. Right now, I am at 3241. That is what I'm at. That's the rating that I'm at. We'll look at the overall healing numbers. Once again, Riptide, Chain Heal, Healing Stream, Totem. Massive amount of healing. It only overhealed by 18.7%. That is not too bad whatsoever. You can see some of the ticks we're hitting for 117,000. This thing hits really, really hard. And um, it, does a, it does a lot of really, really good healing. I'm looking at the right one, right? Yeah. So... I really love this build. Again, Riptide, Healing Stream Totem. Those are the passive elements as well. We've also got Earth Shield procs going on. That's, that doesn't really count because you always take Earth Shield. So Healing Stream Totem, Riptide. And then I've got Earth Living Weapon down here, which is another passive component. We did have Healing Tide Totem. You don't always have to take Healing Tide Totem. It's kind of whatever. Those are the passive components of this build. Your Tidal Reservoir, of course, coming through. They do a lot of healing for you, right? Even just Riptide, Healing Stream Totem, and Earth Living Weapon put together. Let's cut the Earth Living Weapon healing in half. It was uh, 2% instead of 4%. So 2% plus 11.7, that's 13.7 plus 18.8. That's like 19, 13. That's like 31% of our healing was um, the passive stuff, okay? So I do want to always highlight how good this build can be, how it can function. This is exactly how it works. You can push bigger keys with this build. I promise you it's going to work. And that is my first plus 26 on Blackwork Hold. I had a really good time with it. I'm going to keep pushing more keys. So let, me, let me know what you guys want. Um, what you guys want to see in the comments down below, if you want to see me do a particular key or give you a particular guide for a dungeon that you're really struggling on, maybe something like Everbloom, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I would love to hear from all of you. Thank you so much again for watching. I will see you in the next one.